And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today's tutorial is all about the shovel. Now these things were introduced to deal with the, the problems of regolith. When you uh, harvest regolith from space, or well, when you run solar, you're going to have to end up dealing with regolith. And if you end up leaving it around and just keep collecting it and collecting it, it will just slow your game down. The game has to calculate more and more the more items you have. So trust me, you'll end up with so much regolith it will cause your game to slow to a crawl. Feeding it to shovels gets rid of well, it gets rid of the regolith and at the same time provides you with an awful lot of meat. This little setup here is not a starvation ranch, this is an actual feed ranch. All of the regolith from up top is getting daisy chained all the way to the end, it drops down here and then we're just using an auto sweeper to dump it across to this automatic dispenser. Oh, forgot to enable that again. Now, there's a, a few things here that I want to cover. Uh, firstly, let's cover what's so useful about these shovels. They consume 4.8 tons of regolith per cycle, which is an awful lot, however they will vomit about half of it back up again, so you're, they destroy 2.4 tons of regolith per cycle. This makes them very, very useful. At the same time, when they die, they drop five times more meat than a hatch. Five times more meat. It's, they're the most cost efficient meat producers in the game. As well as that, it's impossible for them to become confined. If you'll check at the moment here, they're in a room that's 37 tiles in size. Normally a hatch needs, I think it's 12 tiles. These ones, there's how many in here now? I think there's about 12 of them and they don't care. You could put a thousand of them in here and they still would not get uh, the cramped debuff. However, they do have a few negatives that go with them. And one of them is that they can vomit out regolith and the regolith they vomit out, well, it can get trapped in annoying places. One thing it can do is it can get vomited into doorways like this, and when regolith gets into a doorway, they can then burrow into the regolith. The regolith sort of over uh, covers the doorway, and then the regolith is something that they can burrow through, so they will burrow through the regolith, even though it's entombing a doorway, and then get out the other side and escape their confinement. This is rather annoying. Another thing they can do is they can, if you have a door on top of the uh, structure, they can actually vomit regolith up here. So you'll notice that there's regolith right there. That regolith is there because they kept throwing up up there and the regolith is getting to that point. That can block your duplicates access. So what you want to do is put a, a mining drill up here as well to stop that from happening. You also have to keep a mining drill down here to stop that from happening. But we'll go through the build a bit later. One of the first things you're going to have to worry about though is what materials you use. Uh, the reason being all of the regolith you're going to be bringing in here is about 300 degrees and a lot of the things you need to get this running, well, yeah, they're not going to be by default very good at it. The overheat temperature your robo miner is 275, the auto sweepers and the conveyor loaders are all 275. So if you want to keep this temperature regulated, you're going to have to stra strap a steam turbine on top of this whole setup and then fill the room with steam. I just dumped two tons of water down the bottom here, then dumped all the early regolith down the bottom and eventually the regolith heated up the water, the water turned into steam and we've got this nice confined room. Uh, we've got some a liquid blob over here with visco gel and visco gel over here, though you can get by with using naphtha over here, let's say, or petroleum. And same over here, you could use a different style of liquid lock. It's just, you know, this is a late game build, so I just threw in all of that stuff. Now we've got regolith inbound shortly. Yeah, I, yeah. so the regolith is going to get daisy chained all the way along, and then it gets fed down here. You'll see them all vomiting up the regolith at the bottom. Let's slow that down a little bit so you can see it more clearly. Uh, every time they take a bite, yeah, you see the way they vomit that up and it's entombing the grooming station. This is kind of an annoyance. There's not really much you can do about it. They can vomit it up anywhere, though they usually will vomit it up close to, well, the majority of it will be vomited up close to where they consumed it. This is a self-regulating build. You don't need to do anything with it. All your duplicates need to do is groom the critters. Everything else is automated. There's varying levels of automation you can use, but this is pretty simple. All that happens is your dupes come along, they groom the critters, the critters run around here, they get fed from all the regolith coming down, and when they drop an egg, there's a tiny piece of automation here. Right over here, if they, they'll get out of the way, there is a critter counter. This is set to 12. Uh, for this in here, we'll go over the numbers, but roughly speaking, for every eight bunker doors, you're going to want about six shovels to deal with the regolith. Roughly, you can get away with five, but I like to use six. It's just a rounder number. Anyway, if there's 12, vo 12 critters and eggs in here in total, what will happen is when this comes across here, it won't be able to get in. There, this will be switched off because of the settings. And because the eggs can't get across here, they'll get dumped over here into a sort of a, an evolution chamber. Otherwise, they go down here and they get left in the corner. The reason they're dumped in that corner down there, the eggs, is this auto sweeper can't reach it. You'll notice the auto sweeper reaches all the way out to here, but it can't reach that corner. That way, any eggs that are there get left there, and eventually they just hatch. You, you don't need incubators with this setup. It's not even necessary. This is because these critters can't become cramped, so because they can't become cramped, you don't care if the eggs are in there or not, and this just cuts down on difficulty. Any excess eggs though, once they've hit the required amount of 12 critters, including the eggs, all the excess eggs get dumped across to the side here and get dumped into this evolution chamber. Now you can fill it with whatever liquid you want. It's a bit strange, these, these voles are actually incredibly tough. 
they can survive to minus 200 degrees and they can survive to 500 C. So you, I'm not even sure how you cook these things once you turn them into meat. But you dump them in here and they will suffocate in petroleum uh, for some reason. Uh, then once they're drowned, they get dumped into the conveyor loader and then we dumped all the meat up here. How much meat do we got? This is about 200 cycles worth of this stuff. So we got about 1.1 million calories of meat just sitting up there. This is pretty much the only use I found for the critter sensor or the only simple use I found for the critter sensor. Uh, at the same time in here, we've got this mining drill. This mining drill can reach everywhere, including that area over there. And I should point out, this has been patched at some point. I don't know exactly when, and it can mine it regular that's in a doorway. You'll see that regular there? That had actually been vomited into the doorway, and that mining drill just automatically removed it. That was not the case in the past, but I would still prefer not to put your entrance doors on the ground level. It just can cause complications and potentially allow them to escape. Just remember, though, they can vomit regolith into doorways and through doorways. So cover those areas with robo miners, otherwise they're going to get blocked. This area here was left so I could try and capture some of it, but well, I ended up losing the save, never mind. The steam turbine on top, I set that to 150C. The reason being, you're not going to be getting that much heat in here. If you want to use the regolith to generate power, you can run the regolith on conveyor rails through here and snake it through to get as much heat out of it as you can. I'm usually not that bothered. If you've got solar set up, you usually have so much power coming in, you don't care. But if you're trying to squeeze every single last bit of power out of a map, you can use regular on conveyor rails to get a little bit of extra energy. Right now, this place down here is... How many have we got? Uh, we have... Ah, we have 11 critters and one egg. So that egg is still in the corner right there. Where is it behind that shovel? We'll pop. Uh, here we go, shovel egg. So that egg is just sitting back there and will shortly hatch. And then we'll have the full amount of critters. That is pretty much the entire basis of this. Uh, there is an extra piece of shipping going on here. This one here, that's just to collect meat. These critters will eventually drop. And when they do, the meat gets shipped out of here and sent up there. Uh, the, you don't want to fill this room with anything bare steam, to be honest. If you fill this room full of hydrogen or oxygen, at some point it will get so hot that everything in here will start overheating. It's, it's a bit of an annoyance. So just do make sure you put in steam. Uh, you will have one minor problem, though. If a vole dies over here, you're going to end up with a lump of meat on the ground. So you might want to build something into your design to help account for that. Maybe have your tubes come along and collect meat and have it dropped off at some storage location or something like that. Or if you don't care that much, it's honestly not that much meat that you're going to lose. Okay, that's 32,000 calories, but in all fairness, these things drop to 30, 32,000 calories when they die. Now let's cover starvation ranching. This is where things get interesting, because you can just make food out of nothing. This here is just one shovel leg. I grabbed it from the, the evolution chamber. We're just going to leave it over here. We're going to hatch it. We're going to groom it, and then, well, we're going to show you how this whole cycle works. Our vole pup has hatched. This thing starts with 43,000 calories. Well, 43,000 and change. However, there's nothing we can do with it for the first five years. For the first five years, it's a tiny baby. It cannot be groomed. Nothing can be done with it. And you'll notice on its metabolism there, it's minus 90% because it's an ungroomed baby. Oh, an opportunity has presented itself. We're missing a critter in here. Let's just drop a quick egg in here and show you how this works. Uh, for We'll just drop in that egg there. That's now in range of the sweeper. We'll set this to slow motion. Uh, now, as you can see, the critter sensor here is going to make a, a slight little detection. It's going to detect that we're just at the right amount, but unfortunately, the moment that egg gets ripped out of there, it's going to detect that the egg is gone. So if we go back out here, you see it's down to 11. So that means it's going to want that egg inside the system. So the egg gets to here. The automation has says, yes, we do want you to continue straight across. Therefore, the shipping will send the egg right across here. Yep, out the other side and dump it into the corner. Boom. Okay, right, now we have exactly 12 critters. Well, between eggs and critters, we have 12. But if we grab another egg, let's say, and we'll just, just dump that in here as well. That gets picked up. That will get sent across. Same thing again. But this time, we've already got the prerequisite number of critters and eggs. So there's no need for it to continue on. Therefore, it'll come down here. It can't go across. It'll get spit at the side. Dumped down there. Boom. Problem solved. That will uh, evolve in there, and we're good to go. Uh, back to this Volpup. All right, our Volpup here is about to become an adult, and the moment it becomes an adult... Oh, still a tiny baby? You're five. Come on. Grow up, would you? Uh, once they become uh, an adult, we can come along and groom them, at which point we c they will have uh, a reproduction counter. Until they become an adult, they don't have the option to reproduce. Ah, finally, here we go. They've turned into an adult. They're five years of age. We'll see that their calories are going down. Now their metabolism is minus 80. Before it was minus 90, they were getting a minus 90 to their metabolism because they were a baby. But now that they're an adult, they're going to actually consume their calories a little bit faster, so they're consuming 960 a cycle. We just have to wait until they get groomed. There we go, grooming complete. Now that they're groomed, they are a happy critter. Reproduction rate has increased by 900%. So now that the reproduction has gone from 2% to 17%. 
And it's actually not quite that. It's about 16.66666%. The numbers are just rounded up to 17. But in six cycles, they will lay an egg, assuming they are kept groomed and happy the whole way through. Uh, currently, though, their calories are at 40,000. And now because they're groomed and happy and all well fed, their metabolism is at the full percentage. As opposed to the minus 80 they had before, they're now consuming the full amount of calories, which is 4,800 calories a cycle. Uh, that means in about six cat cycles, they will consume 28,800 calories. And you'll notice they have more than enough left to reach that. So all we're doing here is we're going to groom them, let them lay an egg, and then they, they can do it all based on the calories they started with. Just the calories they were naturally born with as a critter. In fact, they'll have enough calories, they'll have about 11,200 calories left over. Roughly, it depends how quickly we get around to grooming them. So they should have enough calories left over to even live a few days beyond that, though we will not get a second egg out of them. About six cycles later, we have got the critter here almost ready to drop their egg. And you notice they've still got... Oh, there they go. It, did that just magically appear? Uh, you know what? I don't want to know. It's fine. But that egg has been dropped and we can just leave it in the room. Since these critters can't get cramped, we can just leave that in the room, it'll have no effect on this other critter. However, this critter has a limited lifespan right now. What's going to happen is this uh, calorie counter is going to go down, and in about two cycles or so, well, what's it? yeah, a little bit over two cycles, it's going to start hitting starvation mode. This critter is about to run out of calories, and you'll notice that its reproduction is currently at 17%. The moment it runs out of calories, its reproduction drops right back down to 2%. The moment a critter is starving, it doesn't matter what else you're going to do, they're, they will no longer reproduce at a rapid rate. At the same time, this uh, new canter has come up. In 10 cycles, this critter is going to starve to death. As in, they're going to... Yeah, they're going to evolve quite shortly. Well, 9.7 cycles from now. A little over 9 cycles this later, this vole is running out of time and it's about to learn the true meaning of Christmas. At which point it evolves into meat and it gets sent over here for our collection. Boom. Ooh. What are you doing? What are you... Oh. It, I may have messed those just a little bit too close together. Let's just put that brick there. Boop. There we go. Uh, so we end up with 16,000 calories worth of meat from that exchange. However, you will notice this shovel egg has not hatched yet. So we are left with an empty uh, ranch just for the time being. But let's uh, skip forward a bit. I'm going to move these eggshells out of the way just for now. This from the first egg. I want to make sure they're separate from the second egg. At 5% incubation per cycle, we're almost there. It takes a full 20 cycles for an unincubated egg or an egg not in an incubator to hatch naturally out in the wild. So right there, come on, almost done. We have our new baby shovel. So that's our new baby shovel and we're sort of right back. Well, yeah, we're right back exactly to where we started with a baby shovel on its own in a in this grooming station. We've got, but at this far side, we've come out with one kilo of eggshell and 1,600 calories or 16,000 calories worth of food, which is actually, I think, 10 kilos. Yeah, 10 kilos of meat, all for the cost of, well, a bunch of grooming. Let's just quickly run the numbers and see what this is worth to us. This meat up here is worth 16,000 calories. You throw that into a grill and you can barbecue it up and you can get 4,000 calories for every 3,200 calories you put in. In other words, you take all of that, you will get five barbecues. So that one vole will give you five barbecues worth of meat. Or, yeah, five barbecues worth of meat, which is 20,000 calories, which is enough to feed one duplicate for 20 cycles. However, this took a while to get. We were 207 cycles in when we started with the original Volpup. Now it's been, well, it's about 31 cycles to get to this point. Uh, that means this is worth about 625 calories a cycle, this one vol. And you need 1,000 calories for a dupe for a cycle, so that's, you know, not enough. But 1.6 volts would be. So if you had 1.6 volts in here, we'll worry about the fractions in a second. That means you could feed a whole duplicate just on that. But let's, let's stretch this out just a little bit. For one grooming station with one dupe, how many volts could you support? Well, uh, it comes down, there's still a bit of a skill bug at the moment. You look at the animal husbandry there. I picked a dupe that had plus seven animal husbandry to start. Then you immediately get them into the skills tree and you give them critter ranching plus one and this plus two. It gives them a plus four bonus to their ranching. All of that combined means whenever they groom a critter, they have a 110% groom duration effect. It's instead of grooming for one day now, they will give them a, a groom bonus of 2.1 days. That means with this, assuming you've picked a perfect rancher, which is, and this is as good as they're going to get unless you want to actually start hugging eggs, but you know, long story. Uh, short version, this is a known bug. You can't improve the ranching without hugging eggs. And best bet is just pick dupes with really high ranching skill. One dupe can theoretically, well, uh, not theoretically, in practice can usually groom about 32 critters all on their own. That means 
so long as they're not too far away and you don't have them running across half the map to get started every morning, they can groom a full 32 critters and keep them all groomed and happy. Which means you could run 32 voles inside this one little ranch. That so happens to be the amount of cycles it took to get here, so that actually works out that you could run about, well, you could feed 20 dupes off the amount of voles you could run in here. So if you put 32 voles in here, have one rancher coming along constantly grooming them, you can feed 20 duplicates and you have to put no resources in and all you get out is meat and eggshells. That's it. However, because of the way these uh, pups work, they don't overcrowd, which means what you could do is just say, if you need more food, stick in another couple of grooming stations. And that way you could run 32 at each of these, so long as you have three dupes all set up to do the, the ranching, and all of them, of course, start with plus seven ranching. That means you could actually, with this just one setup in here, you could provide enough food for 60 duplicates. 60 duplicates just with three dedicated ranchers. That's an awful lot of food for nothing. Uh, to fill these up, though, at the start, there's a, a few different methods. Some people originally, like if you're doing a, a rush and you're trying to get the carnivore achievement, uh, eating, I think it's 100,000 calories in the first 100 cycles, some people, what they like to do is go grab a bunch of shovels from the top of the map, feed them dirt. These They can't eat dirt, though I wouldn't advise it unless you're going for the achievement. They can consume dirt. Uh, dirt. You, you use that to replicate their numbers. You don't need this fancy setup here. You can basically dump your shovels in a box similar to this then you can dump a bunch of regolith in there either through storage containers or drop-offs whatever you want automatic dispensers feed them all up and use get any of the eggs that they create and extract them out for example here we have this which we will just complete we will then remove that conveyor chute deconstruct it uh, get rid of that Boom, now, any eggs that are created in here will get siphoned across into there. Though we are probably going to need a few more ranchers, aren't we? While we are adding more eggs there and waiting for our extra ranchers to come online, we'll just uh, cover a couple of things here. One, all of these metal tiles down here, they're made out of different materials. So we've got copper, lead, iron, aluminum, gold, tungsten, uh, steel, niobium, thermium, and we've even got some diamond tiles over there, a bunker tile, and an obsidian tile. All of these will contain these uh, shovels. Shovels can usually burrow through non non-refined metals, and anything, any mineral that's not obsidian usually. However, there is uh, some exceptions to that, and pneumatic doors. They will not barely through, burrow through pneumatic doors, no matter what the pneumatic doors are made out of, even if it's uh, copper ore or something along those lines. Uh, as well as that, when it comes to mesh and airflow tiles, they can burrow through them unless they're made of steel. They can't burrow through steel. So if you have anything made of steel, whether it be mesh or airflow, something they could normally burrow through, if it's made of steel, they can't go through it. Uh, just good safety precautions. Uh, one thing people like to do early on if they get voles out of uh, if they get voles early on and they don't have any decent material you can usually just build a room out of doors and then just make sure that your grooming station is on top of say a couple of tiles of obsidian or diamond or lead whichever one's the easiest for you to get early on put those in and you can you can pretty much go get along as, as much as you want after letting our uh, grooming go a little bit nuts we may have went slightly overboard we're now up to 138 critters in that room however that does count the eggs and well I know I said you could support about 30, was it, 32 critters? Well, the thing is, there is some downtime, as in there is that period of time where there's just the egg and the critter itself has uh, has evolved. So during that time frame, that actually does give you a bit of leeway. So I think what we'll do here is we will just cut off the influx of new eggs and we'll see if that remains reasonably stable. You know what, we'll cut it off and we'll give it 100 cycles. How much How much meat do we got in there? Wow. Okay, we got a... Uh, that's that's 2,000. 2 million... 2 million calories right we'll get rid of all of that then uh, we will just put this back to normal over here there we go now all those excess eggs will go in there and let's see what happens these have been set to the highest priority we want to see if we can sort of maintain the population in there and see what it sort of what's the maximum you can support about 50 cycles later the amount of critters is holding pretty steady it's uh, it's a bit hard to tell exactly how many there are in there because some of them were tied up in eggs some of them were tied up in critters some of them were tied up in both it, it gets all sort of confusing we got about 50 cycles, we got about 2.5 million calories and, well, 2.6 million calories. It goes up pretty quick. I'm going to call that pretty successful. Now, I've included the save game file for the, this design in here as well, the whole save game file for this, so you can grab it and have a look. When it comes to making the, uh, the starvation ranch, just remember, you don't need something this complicated to feed into it, just a, a room, a dispenser, dump some regolith in there and use a few uh, breeding voles to actually dump in the population. It's fairly straightforward. You only need one of these when you want to actually dispose of all of that regolith you're going to get from uh, from uh, from your solar farm. However, do bear in mind, these are these are a lot more efficient because you're feeding them and you don't have uh, the downtime of the 
uh, there's going to be times where these voles are going to be starving and when they are starving you're just going to be wasting time grooming them when you don't really need to for example this one's been groomed even though it's starving and it's not really worth anything there's things people have done to try and avoid wasting the time on that but considering the amount of food you get out of them usually i just throw an extra dupe at it to make sure i have enough food anyway i uh i hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck mm -hmm.